looking at basic math. But what topic are we looking at? Well, we're looking at... We're looking at decimal arithmetic. Decimal arithmetic. We already know regular arithmetic, and especially arithmetic with multiple digits. In fact, we could dance that all into one lesson. You should watch it. So, basic, uh, well, basic arithmetic with uh, multiple digits. Uh, let's review what we have just in order to get the hang of it. So we remember all four, correct? So first of all, there's addition in which we have regrouping. So for example, if I had to add these two numbers, 265 and 359, five and nine and 14, so we take that 10 out of the four because this, uh, it would block this answer plate otherwise. So we would take this one, put it up here. One plus six plus five is 12. Since this one would block the answer plate, since this one would block the answer plate, we put it on top again. One plus two plus three is six. Six twenty-four. All right, subtraction works mostly the same way. Now multiplication, Let's say we were multiplying 265 and 359. We're using the same two numbers. And so, 9 times 5, uh, 5 times 9 is going to be 45. So, we, we, oh, we carry that 4 over to the next row. So, we get 9 times 6 is 54, plus 4 is 58. We carry that 5 up. 9 times 2 is 18. Plus 5 is 23. And now we repeat those steps all over again. So just uh, watch me. This is going to be somewhat like ASMR. Well, but uh, maybe it's not. Maybe this is just an inaccurate depiction. Maybe I'm just going crazy. Who knows? So then there is finally... 200, uh, 3 times 5 is 15, carry the 1. 3 times 6 is 18, plus 1 is 19, carry the 1. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So now we are going to add what we have, 5, 3, and, and we carry the 1. This is really just like multiple digit addition. And then 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 5 is 11. Then 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 9 is 15. And then 1 plus 1 plus 7 is 9. 9 95,135. And finally, division. We can do long division. So for example, if we had 518 or 500 and 28. Let's check if that's divisible by say 8. So what we first do is we try and subtract what is the greatest factor of 8 that's lower than 5. Well what is the greatest multiple of 8 lower than 5? That's right it's 0. And what times and what times 8 is 0? It's like a puzzle like a backwards multiplication problem. Well, 8 times 0 would be 0. So, we take that 0 and we carry it over to the quotient. So, we know that there were 0 hundreds in our quotient. So, let's... Uh, Alright. Now, we are going to carry down the 2 to see if that will help us. Now, what is the greatest multiple of 8 that is lower than 52? That's right, it's 48. And now, there's a puzzle over here. 8 times what? It's 48. I'll give you a few seconds to do this. Pause the video for more time. 1, 2, pause the video for more time. 4 and 5. Alright, the answer was 6. So, we're going to put... 6 in the quotient. That's how many tens there are. Now, we get 4 left over here. And we're going to bring the 8 down. And now, what is the greatest factor of 8 that's less than 48? 
Well, technically, it's also 48. So, we know that 8 times 6 is 48. So, we're going to put a 6 in the quotient and 0. So, our remainder is 0, meaning there's nothing left. And our answer is 066, otherwise known as 66. All right, so we've revealed our basic multi-digit arithmetic. Now, we're going to throw that out the window. Well, not really. Some of the ideas are carried over. But this is going to change a lot. Now, let's look at decimal versions. So... For addition, it's much of the same thing. Let's uh, say we were adding 3.6 and 2.9. Now, it's, uh, first of all, it's very important, just like when we are adding, we align the ones place. It's very important to align the decimal point when adding with decimal. 6 plus 9 is 15. So, 6 and 9, that's 5, carry the 1. And 1 plus 3 plus 2 is going to be, uh, let's see, 6. So now, are we done? Is it 65? Well, it looks feasible at first, but let's actually check by estimating. So 3.6 is pretty, pretty close to 4. And 2.9 is pretty close to 3. 4 plus 3 is 7. That's nowhere near 65. Wait a second. We forgot the decimal digit. Or the decimal point. We have to bring down the decimal point in order for it to be correct. 6.5. Now that's a bit uh, Now that's much closer to 7 than say 65 was. All right, so that looks to be decimal addition, but there can be a trick behind your back. What if we had, say, 6.57 plus 2.135? Wait a second. They have a different amount of decimal digit. There's two over here and three over there. That's strange. Well, I'll we'll see what we can do. Now, remember, the way we do this is by aligning the decimal points. So, we're going to write 2.135 over here, and then 6.57. Actually, not uh, 6.57. Scratch that. 16.57, just to make it harder. 6.5 or 16.57. All right. So now... These might not line up because there's an extra digit over here and over here. But imagine there are invisible zeros that we don't need to show. Kind of like how 4 is actually equivalent to 4.00. It is actually equivalent to 4.00000000. And so on and so on. So, um, that's, we don't really need to show those zeros. But imagine they're there. So, now, we st instead of starting from the ones place, we start from whatever place is the furthest to the right. So, uh, we have this place, which is the tens, hundreds, thousands place. So, we have zero plus five is equal to five. Thousands. Then 7 and 3 together is 10 hundredths. But remember, 10 hundredths can be classified into 1 tenth and 0 ones. Or, zero, or 1 tenth and 0 hundredths. So we can carry the 1. 1, 5, 1. 1 plus 5 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. Alright, now we carry down the decimal. And 6 plus 2 is 8, 1. 18.705. And we have to show the 0 over here because there's a digit after it. And 18.705 is not equal to 
1.75. You have to remember that. Alright, and now what about subtraction? Well, subtraction works much the same way as this. We don't really need to cover that. What about multiplication? Oh, multiplication gets a, it's quite a bit harder. So, let's say we have, I don't know, 3.95 and 2.1. So, now, we don't need to necessarily line up the decimal digits here. Now, there's a very clever trick that I'm going to use to make this much easier. What I'm going to do is say the decimal points don't exist. In other words, what I'm doing is I'm moving the decimals to the end of the number. So, once I move them to the end of the number, so every time I move the decimal digit, one space, I'm multiplying by 10. So, for example, 3.9 times 10, you move the decimal, that's 39. So, same thing works with dividing by 10. If I divide it by 10, then it would become 0 0.39 because I put the decimal point in front of 39. Alright, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to put the decimal points at the end and we're going to visualize them. Here, just so we can remember, even though you don't usually need to visualize them. So now, 1 times 5, and this is just works like a regular multi-digit uh, um, multi multiplication problem. 1 times 9, 9. 1 times 3, 3. 2 times 5, 10. 2 times 9 plus 1 is 19. 2 times 3 plus 1 is 7. Boom. 3 over 5, 9. This is 12 and 8. 82.95. But now it's time to stop pretending. Since we multiplied the beginning, <coughs> so remember, we moved the decimal to <coughs> two spaces. So that means we multiplied by 10 once, and we multiplied by 10 twice. And we moved this <coughs> decimal point once. So we multiplied a third time by 10. Now we need to divide back three times by 10, because we have multiplied our beginning. Uh, because we multiplied our factors, we now must take that out. We must like filter out these t extra 10 that we gave to 3.95 and 2.1. So how many decimal point, uh, how many spaces did we move the decimal point into? One, two, three. So we're going to move the decimal back the opposite way one, two, three times. 8.295. Or 8.295. Finally, and for the vision. What is for the vision? Well, it's pretty easy. So let's say we had um 98.5, or rather, let's say we had 98.4, and um let's say six. So. I'll have to teach you what to do with the remainder. I don't think I've ever taught that before. So, first of all, <clears throat> um, what is, uh, we remember, what is the lowest multiple of six? Uh, what is the highest multiple of six that's less than nine? Well, that would be six. And six times what is six? This should be easy. Five, four, three, two, one, it's one. So, we put a 1 over here in the tenth. And now, uh, remember, we also have to carry the decimal. Now, we are going to bring down 
the eight. So just like our regular division, so nine minus six, that's three. And 38, what is the largest multiple of six that's smaller than 38? Um, well, six, that would be 36. So six times what is 36? Five, four, pause the video for more time, two, one. That would be six. So we get 38 minus 36. We're going to put a six in the quotient and we have two remaining. Now we bring over the decimal point and four. And now you pretty much know what to do now. So what is the largest uh, multiple of six that uh, um, is not less than 2.4? Or, well, let's ignore the decimal point for a bit. Well, um, wait, what? Okay, so 2.4 could be our remainder, but remember, 24 over six is four. So can we do the same thing over here? Well, yes we can. 2.4 and we're going to just subtract 2.4. And six times not four, but 0 0.4 will be 2.4. So now that's zero, we get that remainder. We get no remainder and we have 16.4. Bam, bam, bam. All right, so now, what about some scenarios that are a bit scary? Like this one, for example, where both the divisor and the dividend are decimals. Well, in those cases, you do not need to worry. What you can do is, just like in multiplication, you can bring up this decimal point one place. However, to make ensure that this is the same on the other side, we must shift the decimal point on the dividend one place in the same direction, the same amount in the same direction. And the reason this is possible is because we have one half, right? So we can, I guess, write that as one and two. Now, we have 1.0 and 2.0. We can also write it like that. But what if we multiplied it by 10 over 10? It's still going to be the same thing because multiplying by 10 uh, over 10 is essentially multiplying by 1. But it gives us 10 over 20. So we move this one, one to the right, and we move this one, one to the right. And 10 over 20 is still the same as one over two, right? So that's the reason this works. So now that is our problem. And now we can solve it normally. So minus 15, 15 times one is 15. So well, technically we could do this one first, but all right. So 20 e to 25 minus zero, we get zero over here. 22, and then 22 minus 15 is the largest one we can get. And so 15 is, uh, 15 is 15 times one, and then seven, we're going to bring down the five, and 75, now the largest factor of 15 that goes into there is 75 as well. So 0, 1, 5, which is 15, and it leaves no remainder. Boom. So the answer to 22.5 over 1.5 is 15. And that's decimal <coughs> arithmetic. Thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you next time.